today I'm gonna to create four different light painted images using this C-Ray T120 cinematic LED light and show you how I made them and what I think of this tool. Let me tell you, as an F-list YouTuber with an inconsistent posting schedule, you would be amazed at how many offers I get for collaborations with brands and startup products. This isn't a flex because I think you just have to have a pulse and a channel to get these offers. But I don't know why they think I'm the right fit for or that I would want to promote, say, a first person shooter video game, at home fitness equipment, vehicle seat covers, or red floral tableware. So these things come in my inbox and I never think about them again. The last month I was contacted by a company called C-Ray about an LED light for photography and video making. And it was actually relevant to me and it was something I was eager to try out and I thought it might be something that you guys would like to see. Full disclosure, I was not paid to make this video but they did give me the light. So I think it's fair to let you know that going in. And here it is. The full name is the T120 Dual Purpose Telescopic Tube Light, and it's an LED light that extends from about 24 inches to just under 48 inches. C-Ray says it has 14 lighting effects, variable color temperature from 2500 to 8000K, and can be controlled through an app. The device feels sturdy, and the quality of the beam of light itself is nice and solid, so you don't see individual bands or LEDs, which is what you should expect from any professional lighting tool, but if you've ever used some DIY lighting stuff, this is gonna be a big upgrade over that. So let's take some photos with it, see how it stacks up. For this first shot, I had an idea where I wanted to shoot a car from a high angle, and with the help of my friend Jordan and his Porsche shop Modern Air Cooled, we put this plan into motion. I set up a camera upstairs, we turned off all the room lights, and we filled the space with some fog to give it some eeriness and haze. I was triggering the camera remotely with my phone, and this made it really easy to experiment and have a good indication of what I was getting. Since our light source is in the frame, shining into the camera, the fog makes that light bloom or kind of glow at the edges and it helps to visualize the light itself as if the light is hanging in the air. One of the most basic principles of photography is that you create a more interesting image when you have the light source at a different angle from the camera. That's what makes things look good and gives them shape and visual interest. So I wanted to light the opposite side of the car and the roof and leave the side that's closest to the camera dark and in shadow. And here is how that came out. I did ramp up the contrast and tweak the colors to kind of get the look I was going for. I didn't get as much definition as I wanted on the car, but I really liked how it blew out this whole area with the, with the background cars on the lifts. So like I said, I was hoping the front would be a little more defined, the front of the car, so I held the light at the front corner for another exposure and then composited those very quickly and kind of got what I wanted. I would prefer to get it in camera, but I was ready to move on because I wanted to try a few more things and put this light through its paces. So for the second one, I had put the light down on the ground just so I could see as I was walking around, and I thought it just looked cool when I caught this angle, seeing the reflection in the door and seeing the light itself in the shot. So that was the shot. The fog helps make it a little more interesting, but I thought this would be cool as if, you know, for the ending video or something, so I snapped that and was ready to keep moving. For the third shot, it was kind of the same thing. Jordan was assisting me and he picked up the light while I was setting up this rear camera angle and it just looked so cool seeing the car in silhouette and the fog all lit up. He held the light at various heights and this was kind of the best one. This is the horizontal version. I think at the time I was envisioning a vertical crop for Instagram of just, just the tail. Otherwise I would have tried to get the light at the front of the car and get a little bit of definition there. A lot of times you go into something with an idea, but the coolest thing is, is sometimes the accidental one that you didn't plan for, and I think that was definitely the case here. Finally, I did a really basic light painting shot for the fourth one, just trying to get the car evenly lit and include some of those background cars in the shot. This was two 13 second exposures. I made a pass along each side of the car and then combined those in Photoshop using the screen blending mode and carefully trying to mask myself out where I ended up in the shot. I think for this one, the haze actually, it made it harder because it was harder to hide the light and easier for me to appear in the shot. If I was blocking the light from appearing in camera with my body, the glow would still get picked up by the fog and show through. 
For a quick shot, I think this came out all right, and if we were in a bigger space or outdoors, you could probably light the car from farther away and, and not run the risk of being in the shot. But overall, I am really impressed. The C-Ray is portable, bright, and versatile. This isn't scientific, but after over two hours of usage, it still has 50% battery without me recharging it, which should be plenty for most of the night shoots you're gonna do. There are some color functions that I haven't really found a use for yet, but it is nice to know they are there. Some things I don't like. I wish it had a backlight on these buttons or maybe just a slight glow or something because these buttons are hard to operate in total darkness. The on off switch is easy to find by feel, but the rest of the buttons are tiny and identical to one another. Obviously you don't want a bright indicator light that could show up in the shot, but something that helps you navigate the controls if you're using it in total darkness would help. The other thing is that it takes a long time to switch on. I tend to, out of habit, switch the light off when I finish the shot. In video, it's a clear cut point, and in photos, it will stop you from overexposing your subject or, or lighting up things you don't want lit during a long exposure. So often, I would finish the shot, switch off the light, and then when I want to actually see where I'm going, I would turn the light back on, and it takes, you know, a couple seconds, and I'm just standing there in the dark. So that is a minor pet peeve. I, that could be a little faster. So I actually have this, which is a competitive product called the Westcott Ice Light 2. This ice light is five years old, so maybe it's unfair to compare these. However, this cost twice as much as the C-Ray, and for that price, I don't think it's something that you should have to replace every two years. As you can see, it is a lot smaller, has fewer functions. You can only adjust the power output. And the worst thing is look how bright these blue indicator lights are. I've had to tape over these in the past because it creates blue light trails that show up in the shot. I don't understand how this could ever happen in the design process. <laughs> the Westcott has a replaceable battery so you can carry a spare, and these buttons are very tactile, so you can feel them and you can tell what they do in the dark, so I do like that. But I will probably be getting rid of this Westcott because there's really no need to keep it around. I can't imagine when I would pick this up instead of this C-Ray. I should mention the C-Ray costs $259, but I have a promo code for you guys to get 10% off by following the product link below and entering the code KEVIN10. That's the code they gave me, and that indicates either the 10% off or that I am the 10th Kevin that they approached with this offer. As always, thanks for watching. I hope I haven't compromised my integrity, and I hope you got something from this quick little tutorial about using an LED light for photography with cars. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.